Hello my friends, Simon from What Culture here, sitting on a fountain in Philadelphia, which sounds like the name of my new EP, which is not. And the cool thing is, this is not going to be evergreen content at all. We're actually going through an eclipse right now, so let's not look at the sun, because we can go blind. And nobody wants that, and especially if you do go blind, you are not going to be able to see the continuation of Cody Rhodes' story. You see what I did there. If you tuned into WrestleMania Night 2, uh, WrestleMania 40 Night 2, Cody Rhodes finally did the big one. He won the WWE Championship, and I thought it was a wonderful moment. And now that I I have had the uh, overnight sleep to sort of think about it. I just think genuinely the ending to that WrestleMania is it, it's definitely in the conversation for one of the best endings to a WrestleMania ever in terms of ticking all the boxes and paying things off and having this wonderful story too, including having, you know, a great heel on one side, a great baby face on the other and two guys that have great chemistry, but maybe it's the best one ever. This is something that I will have to ponder on. Again, you've got the comments down there. You can let me know. And of course, there's going to be some recency bias in this because we're just coming off the event itself. But Cody Rhodes to me, and I've seen a few people use this word, so I'll use it as well. I'll jump on the bandwagon. He's just so endearing. And if you go and watch his post-WrestleMania press conference where he tells a story about if you could see Dusty Rhodes right now, you know, I'm sure Dusty wouldn't believe it. He'd apologize for that tattoo. And I think Nick Khan, Bruce Pritchard, and Triple H, they say bought him the exact same Rolex that Dusty Rhodes sold way back when in order to fund Cody Rhodes going through acting school. Now, whether they mean it was the exact same one, which would be crazy, or whether it was just the same make and model, all these little stories make Cody Rhodes feel like a real person. And a lot of people have said this too. We'll kind of mention it and then we'll move on because we can't give details right now. There are a bunch of more stories that Cody has done for a lot of people in professional wrestling that one day will come out and I'm sure it's going to raise his stock anymore. Now, Moving into WrestleMania 40, so many people are like, well, we can't possibly have Roman Reigns lose because then what, are the st what do we do with the story then? Now, obviously, wrestling is literally the never-ending story. It goes on 52 weeks a year. There's multiple shows that you can essentially do whatever you want. And I think Cody himself said it. This is just like a chapter in the book of the American Nightmare. That's why I think it's so exciting because absolutely two things can happen here. He holds, he holds the belt for a little while. Maybe he takes on Gunther. Maybe we get to the Rock match. Maybe he has his rematch with Roman Reigns. Maybe Seth Rollins does something. There's four matches you could do right there, should you want to plan it out. But then there's the other side to all of this as well. We've seen it happen time and time again. I would never do this, and I hope this doesn't happen, but wrestling is a curious beast. Maybe now Cody has finally won that championship. Do we get into the strange back and forth territory that is pro wrestling where all of a sudden people start booing him. All of a sudden people decide, oh no, I'm going to go with this guy now. And I can totally see a world, especially if we did it in the um, the, the, the Germany pay-per-view premium live event. I can't remember what they're calling that now. It doesn't matter. Whatever the hell they're calling it. Imagine they decide, you know what, at that show, we'll do Gunther versus Cody just to see what happens. You'd have to imagine that a very pro Gunther crowd would be there and that could also turn things on a dime and I think the cool thing about Cody as well because he does come across so genuine is that I don't think he needs a long reign like Roman Reigns had in fact I would actively go in the other direction so let's say that we get to a backlash or again the Germany pay-per-view or even the SummerSlam show and maybe we do decide to take that title off him and maybe it is in crazy circumstances instantly you can start telling a different narrative there so you have a character basically that people are invested in and you want to talk about the next John Cena? Absolutely. You want to talk about the next Stone Cold The Rock? I don't mean about metrics or the right now WWE arguably is doing better than ever. But given the way that he is working, given his age and given his talent, I suppose, he can keep doing this for another 10 years should he so wish. And think about all the stuff that you can do during that. I mean, even when it comes down to The Rock, The Rock pings Cody Rhodes on night one at WrestleMania. Of course, there's a bunch of shenanigans and there's a bunch of nonsense. But as and when The Rock is able to come back to WWE, because apparently on the roster section on the website, he's been moved to the alumni section. Now, that may be a trick. It could be one of many things. This happened with MJF on the AEW roster page recently. But even if The Rock is going away for a while, as soon as he can, he can come back, and I'm pretty sure we will do the Cody Rhodes and the, and the Roman Reigns match at some point, you could start that new story like that because, again, all Cody, all The Rock has to say to Cody is, hey, man, I pinned you for the one, two, three the night before you came the champion, so that belt is mine. And then do you know what we can do at that match? Roman Reigns either on purpose or accidentally gets involved. That then sets up The Rock and Roman maybe for WrestleMania 41 or even WrestleMania 42. And that's what I think. If I could really choose it, and again, this is not really how Mother Nature works as people are getting older and you don't know what people's schedules are. But if you can get to the point where next year it's Cody versus The Rock, right? Which would be just an absolutely wild match. And that finishes with Roman doing something accidental but stupid, which then leads to WrestleMania 42, where it'd be The Rock 
versus Roman Reigns, and that's when The Rock finally says, okay, I'm done. Well, that's wonderful. And let's face it, I very much doubt Dwayne Johnson is going to have his last match on night one of a WrestleMania where he wins. That's a very, very strange um, ending to his own personal story. And who's the nucleus to all of this? Who has kind of brought all this thing together going all the way back to, what, late last year? or Jan No, January it was. It's Cody Rhodes. And few people come along in pro wrestling that have that kind of magnetism or whatever dumb word you want to put on it so much in the same way as other people in WWE right now have multiple stories again if we jump across to the world heavyweight championship Seth Rollins can still be involved in it obviously Damian Priest Drew McIntyre CM Punk again maybe that's where you insert Gunther you can do the same with Cody and you can almost do the same with Cody on a greater level because he himself has said I want to be on Raw I want to be on Smackdown they then announced the draft recently so I think he may have said that just because he wants to tease well, which way, which direction is he going to go in? But I think it's all super duper exciting. And look, if you want to go back to the past in order to make things make sense in the future, what would we have done with a Hulk Hogan? We would have got a big man, a big man that wanted to slap man meat. And even the Hulk Hogan was also a big man that wanted to slap man meat. It was always portrayed as, oh, how is Hulk Hogan going to overcome this? Gunther's right there. And after WrestleMania 39, WWE decided to do the Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes trilogy if that's what we want to call it and all it did at the end of it was cement Cody Rhodes as a bigger baby face so maybe you do go to Germany and you do do Gunther versus Cody Gunther wins but then you get to round two maybe Cody wins it back then you get to round three and that would establish Gunther in the main event scene like the fact that he is coming off a loss at Wrestlemania with the Intercontinental Championship but people are still saying I don't care he should be in the main event means he can do that again and then really you should start planning for when Gunther can have a proper run with that belt too. And without wanting to go off too much of a tangent, as everybody hoots me, maybe because they don't want me sitting on this fountain, I don't know. I think that is really why WWE is hitting on so many cylinders right now. It's because you have probably, in both divisions, the men's and the women's, you probably have 15 people that could be the champion and people would be accepting on it. Like, imagine I told you 18 months ago, two years ago, or when he was in, in Ring of Honor as Punishment Martinez, that that guy was going to be the WWE champion at WrestleMania. Mania 40, but that's absolutely nonsense. So, I'm not saying that Cody is responsible for all of this, of course he's not, but in terms of this new era, as The Undertaker's about to arrive, I know it's coming up on camera, but it's getting really, really dark here. As soon as Cody did arrive, there were a bunch of moving pieces, a bunch of sliding doors moments that was absolutely terrifying and sounded like an organ that has led us to this, whatever we're calling it. Some people have said they call it the Paul Levesque era. I think we should call it that. It has a really, I like, look, I love Triple H. He's one of my favorite wrestlers ever. That just doesn't have the same, same kind of a ring to it. And also, what if he does this job for the next 25 years? That's not going to work. But I do believe Cody coming back at WrestleMania 38 started all of this. And again, we go back one year. I was certainly one of those people that was an advocate for him losing as long as we did what we did do. And we have done that. So now we can come out the other side and we can still keep telling even more stories. Is something happening behind me? Oh, man, what is happening behind me? Oh, my gosh. That's Michael Oku and Amira. UK, British independent wrestlers who one day, they probably already have broken out in many ways. <laughs> Hi guys, thanks very much for doing that, I appreciate it. <laughs> I've, I've explained it by the way, otherwise the comments will go crazy. You can come and say hello though. Oh my God, are you live? I'm live, we're not live live, we're as live, we're like live to tape, you know about stuff like that. Oh, you could, I'm so sorry for you. Pimp, pimp your social media, there you go. Hello, I'm just so happy that I've travelled all this way and I've finally met Simon Miller! That's right, that's right. all this way just for me, right? Yeah, that's I was looking at you for you. It's, it's been happening all weekend. I saw Russell all weekend. Weekend. I couldn't find him. No, you couldn't. I would have to the That's okay. Him. Mike, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing have a nice well. WrestleMania. Lovely WrestleMania. <laughs> great been great WrestleMania. Would you like to pimp anything while you're here or promote anything? Other than, I'm not going to pimp you, but I'm going to pimp uh, the uh, michaeloku.com at the OJMO for yeah, things yeah, and yeah. stuff and things and just all things professional wrestling in the UK I guess. watch all his matches too he's really really good yeah. five star six Michael star. was it six star he gave you well what do I know well, what do you know <laughs> what do I know yeah. nothing it was a good match though good there we go lovely seeing you guys see you take guys. care <laughs> all weekend <laughs> take care all weekend we get them doing this. They're very nice people, though. And you should check out their work in Rev Pro. It's very, very good. The point is this. They had a story with Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay has now gone off to AEW. He'll tell more stories. Those guys are going to be fine. They'll absolutely smash it, as will Cody Rhodes. I'm very excited about the future of WWE. Phil and I were talking about it on the way down here. The last few years, the Raw after WrestleMania has felt a little bit 
disappointing, I suppose. And especially last year, which was clearly rewritten at the last minute. That's not what Triple H does. And I think he's set up many things for the future, including maybe a Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns feud based on what we saw at WrestleMania night two. So yes, I just the greatest idea to do the way to do things we have done with Cody Rhodes and now we see what happens maybe it doesn't work and you know what that doesn't matter either because you throw things at the wall and if something sticks and it's getting the right reaction we see it through to the end which is what we've done now chapter one is done I guess chapter one was him leaving WWE so chapter two is done now we move on to chapter three but again all your opinions in the comments below follow those two buffoons because <laughs> they're nice people otherwise like the video share the video subscribe I'll see you on the next one